Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about mental models. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, how can you develop a good mental model of the code, uh, code base that you are working on? So usually the way I do it is that uh, I need, this takes a little while, even for like, uh, you know, developers who have been working for a while, it will take a while because whenever you start working in a new code base, uh, the system is new to you. You haven't, you, you can't, you, you might know how, you know, all the programming languages and like whatever you're using, like the tech stack, how that works. But the more, the domain model, as we call it, the problem model that you're dealing with is going to be new to you uh, because uh, there, every single application that has, say, a login or something like that usually has a user model or something representing a user within the system. But although that thing is probably in every single system, right, it's going to behave a little bit differently. It's going to be found in different places and, in, you know, it might have different, uh, depending on if you're using classes or what you're using, it might be different methods or different services that, you ex uh, that use it. The data that's being stored might be in different formats and so forth and so forth. So everything is always a little bit different and sometimes very different. And so what I usually do is that I try to uh, basically expose myself to the main models within the system and by figuring out what the f core functionality of the system is, I can start breaking down the system and make it make more sense of it. It's uh, I've never really found it to be very like uh, do these high level uh, diagrams. It's never really going to give you that aha moment. Oh, uh, okay, this is how everything is supposed to be working, and this is how it all fits together. Uh, where you do like diagrams of this system talks to this, or this box points to that box, and that box points back to that box, etc., etc. That can give you some under some high level understanding of how things might be working but to really understand uh, for for you to be really a able to mentally model how everything actually fits together at least i need to understand the data that's the thing that i focus on so the first thing i want i look at is all right which, what are we storing in the database because at the end of the day everything is about the data in the database uh, mostly uh, everything starts and ends there so when I go and look at those models, I can sort of see that, all right, so these are the entities that we're dealing with, or like the stored entities at the very least. And then usually I take it up a level and I take a look at what endpoints are we dealing with? Because usually the way that you can think about it is that uh, most, at least in web, most APIs, uh, they work in a pretty similar fashion. So your endpoints are the actions that take place within the system. These are the operations that you are. Uh, your it's basically functions. You can in a like I, I, you can almost think of it as the icons in your computer or the programs in your computer, the commands that you send to this API. So those are the actions that describe what the user wants to happen, and that's half of the thing that you need to understand. The other half is okay. These actions on what entities? Like what are these states that? you end up with if you apply those actions. So as an example, if it's users we're dealing with, here we have all the user endpoints and the different actions that you can do on a user. And then you look at the user model and you see, all right, these are the fields, the data we are storing about a user. Okay, now I understand what the user, what the person using this system wants to do with the user and what the user knows about like, what data we're storing about the user uh, itself, right? And that helps a lot, uh, I think, at least for me, uh, to figure, sort of start mentally modeling things. And then you can sort of take a look at the really meaty part, which is usually the business logic, uh, which is the th layer we have in between storage and, well, basically incoming network call. And now it becomes a little bit more tricky. and. I usually tell software developers, especially the ones who are a little bit newer at this, uh, who in many cases feel a little bit of anxiety that they don't really fully understand the system, and I say, that's okay. It's not going to be easy for you 
to just understand all the things immediately. I mean, I can't do it, and I know I don't know anyone who is like the people who are more senior than me. They can't do it either. It takes a while to learn all the things because the the systems that we work on are usually pretty big, and so what you should focus on, in my opinion, at the very least, is a little bit the same way as how you should educate yourself. Like if you're going to learn a really big topic, it's sort it's sort of honest, honestly a little bit like becoming a software developer. There's so much that you have to know in order to be a full-fledged software developer that you can't just sit down and learn it all in a week that's going to be impossible so what's better for you is to have some strategy for how to learn all the things that you need to learn and then splice uh, slice it down into pieces instead and take each piece, piece as you go and try to when you're dealing with one part of the system try to focus on really understanding that part because when you feel like it's uh, you want you learn how that part works then it becomes easier for you to learn the next thing and when you understand the next thing, you have two pieces of the software and you start to very quickly uh, figure out that all of these things are connected in some way or an one way or another. And if you just take the time to learn each piece individually, you will start to, like, the, you know, the veil will unfold and the matrix code is going to start making sense to you because you're taking it step by step. Uh, you're iterating on uh, on trying to figure the things and uh, the stuff out, right? That usually helps uh, a lot with the mental modeling as well, because you to f efficiently model things in your head, uh, you have to really understand how they work. Uh, usually, I argue at the very least, because it's very difficult for you to figure out how all the pieces are fit uh, fit together if you don't really know what each piece does and getting down to that level of granular, granular understanding, it takes a while and it requires in-depth uh, experimentation and playing around with the code to fully understand, I argue. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you're having problems modeling code in your head or trying to learn how to do that, my suggestion to you is to start and try to understand the endpoints that can be called, like the network calls basically. Because the, you can think of those as the actions that you can take within an API or whatever you're doing, like the things that people are interacting with. And for the front-end developers, it's basically the same thing as clicking or like interacting with something on the page. Those are the things that the user can do with the system. And then you look at, all right, what data am I storing about what the user is doing within the system? These are the two layers, like the two, like the top layer and the bottom layer, basically, usually, what we call them in a layered architecture. And so if you understand those two parts, then you know what data is stored and you know what actions can be taken. Then you start to start, uh, very usually figure out, all right, these are the ways that I make things happen and this is where I can look at what happens if I do that thing. And then you have the meaty business logic in between, which is usually the more complicated thing to figure out. That's going to take you some time to figure out. So I suggest to you to start just understanding those two pieces to start uh, when you when you begin because that gives you an understanding of some of the main things you, like the like the foundation stuff that you need in order because the business logic is sort of re, re, it's not important if you don't know what you can do with the system and what's going to be st stored uh, afterwards usually. Uh, so start with those things and then take a iterative approach to understanding the business logic because modeling how the system works uh, just like immediately is going to be basically impossible for you. So take it story by story and make sure that when you work on an area of the code within your company, try to actually make sure that you understand sort of how that area works and like look around a little bit and look at what interfaces you have, what different methods you have that call are called and sort of how they work and so forth and so forth. So you get that little bit more holistic understanding of that part of the code because when you do that, and you really understand the way that your code is supposed to be working, uh, after a while you will do that so many times that you sort of know, you, you get a really good feeling for how the overall system works because it's all about how all these things fit together. Understanding just one part of a system is makes it almost impossible for you to understand how the whole system works as, as a uh, together because most of what we do in software development as you you can think of it as a network of nodes everything is connected to everything else and you can't really fully understand all of the uh, things that are happening within the system without understanding the connections between the different nodes that's the thing that you're going for have a great day